Amen. Well, good morning, Mosaic. It is so good to see you guys here today, both in the room and online, for the last Sunday of 2020. It's going to be a great day, and I hope that all is well with you and your families during this holiday season. Um, Pastor Brandon is out of town today. He's celebrating the holidays with his family. So I just want to say publicly, I'm so grateful for the opportunity he's given me to share God's word and to hang out with all of you today. Um, I want to have a conversation with you all today about New Year's. Um, In case you didn't know, we are less than five days away from ringing in 2021. Now, a lot of you hear that and you say, praise the Lord, because 2020 has been one for the books. Am I right? I mean, it has been an absolutely crazy year. But what I know is New Year's is a very fun time of year for a lot of us. Uh, For many of us, we spend time hanging out with friends or family. We grill out, we shoot fireworks, we watch Ryan Seacrest host the New Year's Eve ball drop or whatever your family tradition is. It's a very fun time of year. But New Year's is also a season of reflection. In this season, we often look back on the year that we're coming out of and we're looking forward to the year that's to come and thinking about the kind of people that we want to be in that season as the new year approaches. Now, look, I don't need to tell any of you, but 2020 has had a lot of significant events that has happened, right? Many of which has been negative. And so as we get started today, I want to have a little bit of fun. I actually want to focus on some of the positive events that have happened in 2021. Uh, 2020, excuse me. I have some pictures up here on the side screens for us to start. Uh, There were new coaching hires for Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Southern Miss this year. For us in Mississippi, this is a really big deal, right? Um, Look, I don't care which one of these three teams you go for. We are all tired of our teams being on a downward slope and not winning games, right? We want our teams to win games. We want them to go to bowl games. We want them to win championships. And coaches give us hope that those things are possible, something exciting that happened. There were also several movies that came out in 2020, mainly because of quarantine. I want to share a few of those with you. Um, for starters, uh, there was a new season of The Mandalorian that dropped on Disney Plus this year. Any nerdy Star Wars fans like me in the room today? Okay, a lot more than I thought there would be. You're my people. Um, the Mandalorian was great because it really gave a lot of us hope. Uh, the last three films, I don't care what you think, were absolute garbage. They were terrible. And The Mandalorian gave us hope in the direction the franchise was going, not to mention we are all obsessed with Baby Yoda, right? Baby Yoda is absolutely adorable. Another show that came out was called The Floor is Lava. Anybody watch The Floor is Lava on Netflix this year in quarantine? Okay, a lot of you. Look, I don't care who you are. There's just something funny about watching people face plant and fail when they're trying to go through obstacle courses, right? That kept a lot of us sane during quarantine. Another one that came out was the movie Hamilton that was dropped on Disney+. Plus. Probably my favorite thing about Hamilton was all of the social media posts of people trying to cover songs from the film, right? In fact, I saw on Facebook this last week, someone posted and said that she was getting weird looks in her gym because she was rapping songs from the movie Hamilton. Look, I would have given anything to see that, okay? (laughs) Last but not least, 2020 was great because sweatpants and the dad bod officially came back into style. Can I get an amen on that, okay? Look, if you're watching this message online right now, You're probably watching this message in sweatpants. And us in the room, we just want to let you know, that's okay. We have all been there this year. We've worn and rocked the sweatpants. And we've all gained a little bit of COVID weight this year. And we're just okay with it, right? We're just accepting it. It is what it is. 2020 had a lot of positives. But 2020 also had a lot of trials. They were trials that divided us. For many of us, we found ourselves opposed to people on the political left or right with it being an election year. We found ourselves divided on things like masks and social distancing and what those things really mean. There were also several trials that isolated us. For many of us, we pivoted towards working from home this year. And what happened is we found out we were all a little more introverted than we like to admit, right? And we weren't able to prioritize our relationships with people. Maybe you were even unable to prioritize your relationships with people because you didn't want to get a friend or a family member or a loved one sick. This year, a lot of us were walking around carrying stress. A lot of us were crippled by anxiety. A lot of us were battling depression. And a lot of us were even fighting addictions. 2020 had a lot of trials that we faced in our lives. Now, 
I talk to a lot of people in my role at Mosaic, both in our church and out in the community, and I noticed during this year that people were giving all kinds of solutions to the problems and the challenges that we're facing. Here's some of the things I heard, maybe you can relate. Well, you're anxious? <laughs> well, you need to eat better. You need to maintain a healthy diet. You need to prioritize exercise. Oh, you're stressed? What do you have to be stressed about? Your life is great. Don't you know that people have it so much worse off than you do? You need the right perspective. Oh, you're struggling with depression? Just go see a doctor, man. Get on medication. That is going to solve all of your problems. And look, while I am not discrediting a lot of those things that are said, I actually think that doctors and medication and right diet and exercise are important. I felt like we never got the answers to the challenges that we were facing this year. We were always left guessing, and we were always left looking for more. And today, I want to let you know, I think God's Word has the answers to the challenges that we're facing. I believe God can give us the solution to our problems and to our trials. Now look, full disclaimer, the answers to the challenges we're facing today that we're going to get from God's Word are not what we would typically expect to get from the world, but they are going to be the best things that we can take and apply into our lives. So that even if our circumstances don't get better in 2021, you can get better in 2021. Let's listen to God's word. Let's listen to his answer and the solution to our challenges in 2020 today. This is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. God's word says this. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Now, everyone here in the room and watching online right now, say the word rejoice. Come on, what is this, a decaf crowd? Everyone say rejoice. rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, everyone say prayer. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there is anything excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Everyone say, think. think. And verse 9 says, whatever you have learned or received or heard in me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. And so how do we respond after this year we've just come out of? Paul sets forth that one of the main ways we can respond is by choosing joy in our lives. Paul says that we should be a people that choose joy. That's why he says in verse 4 that we should rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, I will say it again, rejoice. Now, as we get started today, I just have to ask, what does it mean to rejoice in the Lord? I don't know about you, but that's not a word in my vocabulary that I use regularly. <laughs> Is rejoicing in the Lord um, walking around all the time with a perpetual smile on your face? Is rejoicing in the Lord being overtly bubbly and optimistic about every situation you're facing? We love people like that, right? <laughs> Is rejoicing in the Lord denying the pain or the sorrow that you feel in your life? No. Rejoicing in the Lord isn't any of those things. Instead, rejoicing in the Lord is identifying the areas of your life where God has been faithful that you can be thankful for and hold on to regardless of how you feel. Now, in order to understand how significant this command of choosing joy is, we got to understand a little bit about the background of the Apostle Paul who's writing the book of Philippians. You see, if you didn't know, Paul is writing the book of Philippians from a Roman jail cell. Now, this isn't like a jail cell down over at Jackson County, right? 
When you hear jail cell, I want you to think one-star review on Yelp, okay? This place had stone floors and stone walls. It was dark, it was damp, it was cold, it was rat infested, there was no bed. That is where Paul is writing the book of Philippians from. And he's writing from that place because he refused to stop sharing his faith in Jesus with other people. And the governing officials of his day couldn't stand it. So they threw him in jail. They threw him in prison and caused a major roadblock in God's plan and God's purpose for his life. However, in spite of that, Paul chose joy in this moment. He identified those areas in his life where God had been faithful, that he was thankful for, and that he held on to, regardless of how he felt. And so look, if I can just ask you something right out of the gate, what does that look like for you? What does it look like for you to choose joy in your life, both in this season and in every season? Maybe for you, it's rejoicing in the relationship you have with God. Man, I know for me, a lot of times, I can become so fixated with the problems and the challenges I'm facing in this world that I lose sight of the fact that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life that I could never live and die a death on the cross that I deserved so that if I would believe and have faith in him, my relationship with God could be restored. Man, I can lose sight of that. Maybe that's something you rejoice in. Is it God providing for you financially? Is it a restored relationship with a friend or a family member? Is it your health in a year where many people have been sick and passed away? Maybe you've stayed healthy and that's something you can rejoice in. I don't know what that looks like for you, but what I do know is that we should be a people who choose joy. Because here's the thing. Joy is more than something we feel. Joy is something that we choose in our lives. Our relationship as followers of Jesus with joy is not a passive thing that just happens. It's an active thing that we choose in our lives. Our relationship with joy is one that we can have regardless of the season that we're in. Look, I know for me this year, I have found myself saying a lot of times, Well, if I can just get through 2020, then I will have joy. If I can just get past all this junk and all this mess, then I can focus on God's plan and purpose for my life. That is letting joy be dependent on our circumstances. Joy is not dependent on our circumstances when everything is going right. Joy is dependent on our relationship with God and who he says we are, regardless of if everything is going right or not. We can have joy even if we lose our jobs. We can have joy even if we don't get the promotion. We can have joy even when things are not going well in our lives. Because when we choose to rejoice, Mosaic, we are not saying that everything is perfect, but we are trusting in the one who is perfect. When we rejoice, we are declaring this truth that Paul said in verse 5 when he said, The Lord is near to us. He cares about what we're going through. When we choose to rejoice, we are driving it into our minds that God has not abandoned us, he has not forsaken us, that he is for us and he is not against us, and that he has a great plan and purpose for our lives, even when we don't feel like those things are true. Guys, even if our circumstances don't get better in 2021, You can get better in 2021 by choosing joy in your life. So Paul comes out of the gate and he says we should choose joy. But Paul also says in this passage that we should pray hard. He says we should pray hard. In verse 6, Paul says that we should not be anxious about anything. He says we shouldn't worry or we shouldn't distress about the things we're facing in our lives. Instead, he says, we should pray hard about everything. Now, look, I think that Paul's encouragement here to pray hard and not be anxious is very timely for our culture today. Because we are a culture that is riddled with anxiety. 
A few months ago, the Mental Health Association of America came out with a study on the state of mental health in our country throughout this year. And here's what they said. They said, from January to September of 2020, over 315,000 people took the anxiety screen, a 93% increase over 2019. It also said that over 178,000 people have reported frequent suicidal ideation. That means that people have thought about ending their own life, and they have developed a plan to end their own life. And it also said that 37% of people in our country reported having thoughts of suicide more than half or nearly every day in September of 2020. Now, I want to press pause on this for a second. And I want to say this. If you are in this room right now or watching online and you are considering ending your own life, I want to let you know that you're not alone. I know that what you are feeling right now seems like you will never get over it. It feels like a mountain that you will never be able to climb. And if that's you, I want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And we're here as a church to help you see what that plan and what that purpose is. Man, if you are struggling with that right now, I would love to talk to you after this service. I'll be right down here. Our staff would love to talk with you. Our lay counseling team would love to talk with you because we believe your life matters, your life is important, and we want to help you see and experience those things in your life. Guys, from these statistics, it is very obvious to see that our country right now is struggling with anxiety. And the common denominator that all of us are looking for is peace. And I want to let you know today that prayer is one of the primary ways that you can experience God's peace in your life and in your situations. Now look, um, I think the reason for a lot of us, I think the reason we don't go to God in prayer in the hard moments of life is because we don't know how to pray, right? Right? We know we're supposed to do it, but when we get in there, it's a little awkward. What do I say? What do I do? And in verse 6, Paul uses a word that I think will help us a lot when it comes to praying, and that word is petition. Now look, if you don't know what a petition is, a petition is a document that we give to someone, not because we have any authority, but because the one we're giving the document to has all the authority. Uh, here at Mosaic, um, I'll just be honest, we have a great accountability system when it comes to our finances. Um, anytime that I want to purchase something for my ministry area, I have to fill out something that's called a purchase order. Has anybody had to fill out a purchase order before for your work? Yeah, they're always such a drag, okay? It is terrible. In fact, the only thing worse than a purchase order is an expense report, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> but here's the thing. Whenever I need something in my role at Mosaic, I fill out this purchase order. This is a written list of things I want and things I need in order to be successful in my ministry area. And once I fill that out, I take it into Jeremy Hall, our executive pastor's office. He always loves it. And I lay it on his desk. And I say, Jeremy, this is what I want, and this is what I need. And I am going to trust you to make the best decision for me because you're an authority over me, and I know that you have my best interest in mind. And that is how, Mosaic, I want us to think about prayer. You see, when you pray, what you're doing is you are acknowledging that God is in authority over you, and you are not in authority you are acknowledging that he is in control and that you are not in control. Isn't that where our anxieties come from in the first place? At least for me, I want to be in control. <laughs> when we pray, what we're doing is we are being honest with God about where we're at and about what we need in our lives. You don't have to sugarcoat it when you pray. God already knows your heart. He knows your mind. So talk to him. Tell him what you want. God, I am struggling right now in my marriage. 
God, I am struggling right now in my finances. God, I am struggling right now in my relationships, and I need your help. I need you to step in in these situations. And when we pray, Mosaic, we are putting our requests on the desk of heaven, and we are trusting God with the results because he always has our best interest in mind. We should be a people that prioritize prayer. I once heard a pastor say, if you're going to worry about it, you need to pray about it. But if you're not going to worry about it, then you don't need to pray about it. Guys, as we go into 2021, I want you and I want me, I want us to be a people of prayer. So that even if our circumstances don't get better in 2021, you can get better in 2021 by praying hard in your life. And so Paul says we need to be a people that choose joy. Paul says we need to pray hard. And lastly, Paul says that we need to control our thoughts. We need to control our thoughts. I want to encourage you to write this down or type it in your iPhone, whatever works for you. If you don't control your thoughts, your thoughts will control you. I want to say that again because I think it's important. If you don't control your thoughts, your thoughts will control you. In Philippians 4, 8, Paul gives us this list of virtues that we should think and focus on that are going to help us in our lives so we can control our thoughts rather than controlling them. I'll throw these up here on the screen for you. Paul says that we should think on things that are true. He says we should think on things that are honorable. We should think on things that are right and pure and lovely and admirable. And in that moment, we control our thoughts rather than them controlling us. And so let me ask you, I'll be very straightforward and blunt here. In 2020, have you controlled your thoughts or have your thoughts controlled you? When you wake up first thing in the morning, do you find yourself striving to focus on things that are true, things that are honorable, things that are right and pure and lovely and admirable, or do you let things like the news things like social media, and things like other people in our lives determine what we think. I'll be honest with you, I think we all struggle here. And so Paul gives us this list of things that we should think through so we can control our thoughts rather than our thoughts controlling us. Now, look, um, this is a long list that Paul gives we do not have time to work through every single one of them. You would hate me if I did that today, okay? You want to get to lunch. But what I want to do is I want to focus on three of these virtues that Paul lists that I think we can really struggle with and that we can really start working on. Here they are. First one I think we should focus on is Paul says we should think on things that are true. It's the first thing he lists in verse 8. Guys, you know this. But the world has a lot of advice. They have advice on the way you should navigate challenges in your marriage. They have advice on the way you should deal with your finances. And they have advice on the way that you should navigate your relationship. One of the most popular questions that I hear as I talk to people today is, what is your truth? The world has a lot of it and a lot of advice. But what we need in this moment is not their truth. What we need in this moment is the truth of God's word. You see, I want to let you know that this book, the Bible, is one of the primary ways we can know truth in our life. Jesus said this in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen to me. As we read this book, we become familiar with who Jesus is. It's what this book is all about. We begin to know how Jesus lived his life. 
We begin to know what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we begin to know how Jesus then calls us to live our lives in response to what he did for us. And so let me just ask you, what does it look like for you in 2021 to familiarize yourself with the truth of God's word? Man, is it joining a community group? Man, I know for me, when I am in a small group of people, God's word comes alive and speaks to me in a way that very rarely happens when it's my own personal study. It changes everything because we really are better together. Man, is it inviting a friend of yours out for coffee once a week and saying, hey, I just want to read through one chapter of one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And I want to meet once a week to talk about that and see how Jesus calls us to live our lives. Man, is it choosing a Bible reading plan where you can read through God's Word in a year or six months or three months, whatever kind of person you are? I don't know what it is, but what I do know is we should be a people that focus on God's truth. Because when we focus on God's truth, we are then able to sift through the lies that are spoken to us in our culture. God's word is the ultimate fact checker for our lives. And when we become familiar with it, it helps us in a great way. Paul also says that we should think on things that are honorable. It's another thing that he lists in Philippians 4, 8. Can I be honest with you today? I'm going to anyway. (laughs) We are a culture that struggles with honoring others. Our culture thrives on exposing the flaws of other individuals and tearing them down so that we can make ourselves look better. Students, uh, I want to talk to you today, uh, middle school, high school. Um, You need to know, man, I love you. You need to know that. I believe in your generation. I believe that your generation is going to do great things for the kingdom of God, and great things for impacting lives around you with the message of Jesus. But a dangerous habit that I've noticed in the lives of students today is we will tear people down in a heartbeat if it means we can make ourselves look better, especially on social media. If it means you can get the date, if it means you can make the team, if it means you can increase your popularity amongst your classmates, we will tear people down in a heartbeat. And adults, it's the same thing for us, right? We blast governing officials on social media when a new executive order comes out. We slam other businesses and expose their flaws so they'll come to our business and get our products. We talk down about other coworkers or former employees and paint ourselves in a better light so that we look better than them. We do this all the time. We struggle with honor. And guys, as the church, we got to do better than that. We got to do better than that. We should be a people that seeks to praise others instead of condemning them. We should be a people that strives to build people up instead of tearing people down. We should be a people that strives to help people, not harm people, and point people to Jesus in everything that we do. Here's what I know about my life. If I think about ways I can honor and appreciate and respect people, then I will honor and appreciate and respect people. But if I think of ways to judge people or ridicule people or tear people down, then I'm going to judge people and ridicule them and tear them down. And it's the same thing for you, too. We should think on things that are honorable, and I want to encourage you to make that a priority this week. The last thing that Paul says we should think on are things that are pure. Things that are pure. There's an old adage that I want to share with you. It's kind of churchy, kind of cliche, but I think there's a lot of truth to it. Maybe you've heard it before. It's garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. Now, look, I don't want to be legalistic here. I just want to be honest. If we saturate our minds with garbage, then garbage is what's going to come out of our lives. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What we think on will determine the way we live. 
So if we think on things that are garbage, if we saturate our minds with things like pornography, if we saturate our minds with things like inappropriate shows or jokes or music, if we saturate our minds with filthy conversations from other people around them, then guess what? That's what's going to come out of our lives in the hard moments that we face in our lives. What we think about in a real way determines what we live. And if you don't believe me, I see it all the time. And people who saturate their mind with pornography end up in a place where it kills intimacy in their marriage. They end up in a place, if they're single, where they have this distorted view of sexual relationships between a man and a woman. If we saturate our minds with inappropriate jokes, then we'll make inappropriate comments at the office. And that doesn't always lead to a good place. If we saturate our minds with music or podcasts that are inappropriate, look, you never know who's watching you. People will see that and people will follow your example. So we need to think on things that are pure. And so let me ask, what does that look like for you? What does that look like for me? How can we be a people that think on things that are pure? Maybe it's leaving a text message group you're in that you know isn't helping you in your walk with Jesus. Maybe it's having a hard conversation with a friend group and setting healthy boundaries. Guys, I will not talk about these things, and if we talk about these things, I'm just going to step away and not be a part of it. Is it setting internet filters on your phone or being mindful of who you follow on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook? I don't know what it looks like for you, but we should think on things that are pure. We have to control our thoughts or our thoughts will control us. And guys, even if, our circumstances don't get better in 2021. Listen to me. You can get better in 2021 if you will control your thoughts. Now, with all of that being said, what do we do when we choose joy, when we pray hard, and when we control our thoughts? What happens to us in our lives? The answer is found in verse 9. Let's look at it. Paul writes and he says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Paul says if we will take these things and practice these things. If I can say it this way, if we will be transformed by God's word and not just informed by it today, then he says the God of all peace will be with us. Man, isn't that what we've all been looking for this year? We've been looking for peace. We want peace of mind. We want peace of heart. We want the kind of peace where we can sleep all the way throughout the night and not wake up in the middle of it worrying about the challenges that we're facing. We want the kind of peace where we can drive to the office in the morning and not be fearful about what's going to happen that day, but expectant about what's going to happen that day because we know that God is with us. And whatever we face, we know that he is right there strengthening us, comforting us, and giving us peace in that moment. Guys, it's so simple, but it's so profound, and it'll change your life. If we will put these things into practice if we will do them on Monday through Saturday and not just on Sunday, we will have breakthroughs in our life and God will move in great and powerful ways. And so I want to encourage you to put it into practice. Real simple, but it will change your life. And lastly, I just want to say, man, if you are here today in the room or online and you're not a follower of Jesus, let me just say, I hope you found what you were looking for when you came in the room today. I hope you found the answers to the questions that you have. I hope you see that God loves you, he is for you, and he has a great plan and purpose for your life. And just like this passage says the God of peace will be with you, the God of peace can be with you when you trust in Jesus and his finished work on the cross. And so I want to close our services right now uh, by praying for us. So wherever you're at, in the room or online, let's bow our heads, let's pray together. 
Father, we come before you and we're so grateful for your word and we're grateful for the way that it challenges us. God, I thank you that your word doesn't tell us what we want to hear. Your word tells us what we need to hear in our lives. God, I just want to pray right now for the person in the room or online who is not a follower of Jesus. God, I pray that they would know that Jesus loves them. Jesus wants to fix the brokenness that is in their life. And I pray that in this moment, they would see their need for you. And that they would pray wherever they're at, God, I admit um, that I've made bad choices. I have sinned against you. God, I believe that Jesus came and lived a perfect life that I could never live. I could never obey your commandments. And God, Jesus died a death on the cross that I deserve to die. God, I'm placing my faith and trust in Jesus now to forgive my sins and to lead my life. God, I admit that in making this decision, I don't have all the answers, but I'm following the one that does have the answers. And if that's you, I'll just encourage you, fill out an online connect card, fill out one in the seat back in front of you so that we can follow up with you and encourage you in your faith journey. God, for the rest of us right now, I pray that we would choose joy. I pray that we would pray hard and I pray that we would control our thoughts. And because of that, God, you would give us your peace in our lives. God, I pray as we go into 2021, we would know that even if our circumstances don't get better, we can get better by doing these things. God, help us to be transformed today by your word and not just informed. We love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen.